I'm going to be refuting the claim that universal health care would not work in the United States today. And in the previous claim of fact speech, the advocate, my opponent, again, had um, stated that universal health care would not work in the United States. And he supports this, his claim, by using two main secondary points. The first is for that universal health care to work, all money spent for medical services would have to be raised by some other means. Now these other means include program cuts and higher taxes as, as being the only viable choice. And his second secondary claim, which is repetitive, is the government would be <laughs> ill-equipped to handle a complicated system considering how they handle Social Security and Medicare. Now getting back to his uh, first secondary claim, which was that the only viable option to fund health care would be raise taxes or cut programs, which is really done according to him. And my response to that is that the advocate give, really gives no mention of the programs that have been cut or will be cut, you know, to fund health care. He also does not mention whether the state or federal taxes would be, need to be increased. And these pieces of evidence are really hard to respond to because they're so vague. They really don't give a precise meaning. And the advocate's reasoning dictates that taxes or program cuts are the only possible ways to fund health care. But there have to be many alternatives. And again, the flaw with this is the claim that he assumes that these are the only two choices out there, that nothing else can be done. Now, my counterclaim is that according to Donald W. Light, who writes for PubMed Central, is that alternative ways of funding health care are one, you, can, you may have public sector, like cities, and private corporations pay a reasonable amount for government insurance, which would, fund, which would help fund the universal program by paying into it. Now, if the government starts to allow insurance, it forces competition between insurance companies, which in competition drives lower prices with economics. So you would, get low you would get lower prices, which everyone could basically afford. Now, according to the Washington Post, the $634 billion reserve fund that Obama proposes would also help lower insurance prices because it will start to provide insurance to those who really can't afford it. And it will also start to drive down medical bills, which I think we all know are hard to pay enough. Now, both these claims are, are able to find universal health care just because they directly inject money into the system, which therefore funds it. And, you know, forcing competition between insurance companies and basically the government would give the uninsured a fighting chance into whether, you know, they're just staying home or when they're forced to go to the emergency rooms because they're so critically ill, they have nowhere else to go. And emergency rooms are more expensive than it's basically funded through us anyway, so you're basically paying for it. Now, the advocate's second point is that the government would be ill-equipped to handle the universal health care system because it is complicated and because, the way they have, and because the way they have handled Social Security and Medicare. Now, the, he really gives no advocate, he really gives no explanation of how complicated a system like Social Security or Medicare is or how it works presently. He also assumes that, is, that universal health care is inherently complicated because it is such a momentous undertaking. Now, the advocate has no evidence the way the government has handled or mishandled the health care and medic the social security and Medicare system, and these five flaws undermine the claim simply because there is no evidence of mistreatment of social security or Medicare. Furthermore, the advocate based merely has an opinion with no evidence to support his secondary claim. Now, the advocate assumes that social security and Medicare are going to fail and that the government would not intervene in any such way. Now, this law undermines the previous claim because the advocate has no, has no reasoning process for that. Just the statement that both systems would be in financial trouble in the near future. In addition, the advocate reasons that the government would handle the universal health care system the same way they handle the social, social Security and Medicare. Now, whether they create a different department or create a different program to handle uh, to handle universal health care is completely different, is entirely separate. Now, my counterclaim is that, again, that the advocate has failed to mention that Social Security, as of 2009, from Social Security Online, provides 7.5 million Americans who receive some sort of money through the federal government in the form of Social Security each month. Is that mistreatment? No. The advocate also fails to mention that Medicare, since 1960, has been providing 
uh, medical coverage for Americans 65 and older without financing failing. Now, is that what she said? No. The advocate has no evidence or reasoning to prove that, that universal health care would not work in the United States. up your response to all these arguments. Is that what's going on over there? <laughs> that click, 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 click in my ear. Oh my goodness. Could be, yeah, you got a million things at your state point. <laughs> <laughs> That's a possibility too. Or you're just nervousness, clicking on the staple. Okay. It's like grinding my teeth. All right, Jacob, uh, you follow the structure very clearly. There's a lot of analysis of what the advocates' points lacked uh, and what you think that they needed to have. I didn't really get a lot of competing argument on those points, and I think that that's one of the things that's missing on the first point is a little bit more information about how um, these alternatives, for instance, would work. I did think that was the strongest part of that first point, the whole discussion that there are only, you know, the advocate says there are only two ways that we can do this, but there are alternatives, and you talk about what the alternatives are. You have some reason to believe that they might be effective, so I thought that that worked pretty well. On the second point, though, uh, I thought that you had the right kinds of challenges, but your evidence on that point is a lot uh, weaker. The stuff about Social Security and Medicare is uh, very general and vague in nature. <coughs> And uh, I know that the advocate seems to presuppose that there are big flaws there. Uh, they're making a, a kind of a presupposition without providing any evidence on those points. Uh, you barely do a little bit better by providing some evidence. If, if we had some indication that Social Security was well managed and that it is, in fact, uh, economically viable, and same thing with Medicare, I think your argument would be a lot more compelling there. Um, but your analysis about the lack of evidence from the advocate's point of view was, I thought, pretty uh, effective in, in kind of responding to the legitimacy of their claims. All right, thank you.